Okay, I'll call the meeting to order at 5.55. Uh, any adjustments to the select board agenda? Uh, adjustments to agenda. I guess the things that I had, I'm just put under other business, so. There was a lady who was maybe going to come in, but she's not, so. Okay. Um... Public comment. Approve bills and payrolls. We've done that. Approve minutes from the 27th. We've done that. And uh, from I didn't finish the minutes from the July 18th meeting yet. Okay. So, um, quick. do we have attendees that can address this, the Valley Lake Road uh, school storm runoff? Yes, we in, have in, tonight Brian Voigt from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Oh. Uh, that's why he's here. Is that what you're setting up or is... No, no, oh, okay, I'm, okay. I'm just going to try to have this ready for when we get to the personal post. Okay. Well, here comes Chuck. So let's just... Although I could hey, bring Chuck. up the 100% design for this project. If, um, hmm. It is on my laptop here. But... Me. So, oh. who's going to be? <laughs> How can that happen? So, you're going to be discussing the. Uh... Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, you're on. So, great, thanks. Uh, as Michael said, I'm Brian Boyd from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I'm right. A senior planner uh, with the organization. I've been there since about March, uh, so a little bit new to uh, some of the stuff that I'm doing here, but I'm the. Um, uh, Focus on natural resources, primarily on water quality related projects. And um, so this project here was one that was handed to me. My understanding is that um, the town went through a 30% design, then uh, completed a 100% design sometime last year. Thank you. And uh, at this point, um, Recently, a month and a half ago, the state released funds to actually pay for this project. I submitted an application right. a couple of weeks ago and just found out on Friday that they have approved uh, that funding for mm -hmm. uh, the project here. Um, for this particular project or just for a whole bunch of projects? Uh, this project here and two projects in Calus. I wrote oh. one proposal for all three projects. Mm -hmm. um, the the uh, estimates for the cost are based on those 100% design plans, uh, if anybody reads the news, you know that cost estimates from three months ago are not valid, so we, uh, I think they put a little bit of extra in there, anyway we can deal with that uh, at, at when we need to. Um, so, How much was approved? Uh, for the three projects, uh, 400 <coughs> $445,000. For Woodbury? No, for, three, for Woodbury all, all and three. the two oh, in Calus. I'm sorry, okay. I don't have the, the cost you breakout, but I can, um, I can get that for you. Okay. I just have the mm -hmm. aggregate budget. Okay. Um, I could also get my laptop and, and dig it up Fine. in there if you want. Sure. Um, so the, uh, the DEC should be producing a contract for me uh, for, uh, between the DEC and the RPC, the Regional Planning Commission, um, hopefully within the next <coughs> month or month and a half. And um, at that point, we could uh, begin work, um, which will look like um, putting out an RFP of our own to uh, get engineering support services for the project. Or we'll have a, an engineer that oversees the, the actual construction phase. And the engineer will um, put together the bid documents and uh, help uh, us engage with uh, contractors to hire a contractor for the project. Michael, is this the same project that you've been? Uh, no, you were working on the culvert. This is different. Okay, never mind. Different project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is Great. that the on yes. the ground? Right yeah. out here? Yes. Yeah. The one out here? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so Chuck's familiar with this too. Um, right. Both Chris and Chuck were. Um, part of the when we were re reviewing the design plans, so, mm -hmm. with it. so just for clarification, this isn't to do with the box culvert. It's no, it, no. It has nothing no. to do with the box culvert. Nothing to do. Right. This is to take care of the water that is now diverted from the school parking lot yeah. and coming down Valley Lake Road 
to an underground leach field out here, sediment pond leach sediment field. Pond. Yeah. So but then that's what's so going to be constructed. Sediment right? filter. Yeah. Right. Rather than going straight into the brook. Yeah. Right. right. The idea is to get some treatment. And we're going to uh, channel. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. We're going to channel the runoff down the backside of the ball field all the way around down in here. Whoa. Rather, well, the ditch is all there. Really? Everything's, everything's, everything's in place to make it happen. Yeah. Huh? So. The ditch is on the other side of the fence? The ditch yeah. goes around the bottom of the yeah. hill over here, yeah. beside the ball field, and goes around and goes down, across the road into the swamp down there. Yeah. Well, we used to call it a pond, but I guess it's a swamp now. It's all <laughs> pond water. <laughs> so. so this is solid piping, or is this perforated? They're picking up anything along the way. It's an open ditch. It's an open ditch. Yeah, it's yes. not, it won't be underground the whole way. The water will go into a, a subsurface sand filter, but then we'll leach out and continue on the way down mm -hmm. to the... Uh, and there will be a small the sediment pond ahead of a manhole over there. Right, so we can clean it. Huh? Yeah. Right. And so it's we had them design it so that when we pulled the cover off, we could clean it with the excavator. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have to get somebody down there and shovel it out by hand. So what will happen with the parking lot to make sure that all of this is pitched the right way? Is it? It's already been done. It's been done. The only thing, we, I've got a little problem over the corner, but that will be a load of three-quarter inch stone and, or stay mat. And uh -huh. We'll finish it, but that's why we changed the driveway up where it is now yeah, rather okay. than down where the blocks were so we could get control of that water and make it come. Push it in the right direction. This way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So just uh, on the lines, along the lines of the the maintenance, one um, one thing that we will need to do is to finalize an operations and maintenance agreement. And during that 100% design phase, a proposed operations and maintenance agreement was uh, written into that 100% design plan. Um, so in terms of expectations from the town, there's the, the work on the, the swale that we just talked about running, mm -hmm. running out here. And then over the, the longer term, uh, the town is responsible for um, the operations and maintenance side of things. But once again, the way that's set up is with the intent that it would be something that the town road crew could do. Um, so not uh, as part of their regular maintenance, um, not necessarily needing to go outside the town's capabilities, right. the road crew's capabilities. It would be a spring and fall thing. Yeah. So the, the, the work that's going to be done won't be done by the town, but it will be uh, maintained in, uh, afterwards by the town. Is that correct? Correct. And so the town um, was involved with uh, the 30% design, the 100% design. What we'll do with um, this project, assuming that you want to move forward, is that once we um, contract with an um, engineering services firm, um, then we'll review that 100% design. It's a little strange it's called that because we can make minor adjustments to it. We couldn't wholesale and start, start from scratch. But uh, to address any you know, emerging concerns, any new insights from uh, the town, from the road crew, and uh, mark that up, I would take that to, to DEC for their final approval, and then, um, then it would get built. So, Someone else is building it, but the town is involved the entire way through with, um, you know, with input related to the project design. Okay. Any, and will that be done this year? The construction will happen next year. Next year. Um, we will we'll get uh, an RFP out for engineering services. I think uh, actually I do have that timeline here. That's uh, by the end of October. Um, and uh, final design uh, will be completed and run through the, the DEC staff by the end of February of next year so that we're, we're ready to go for um, construction season next year. So you'll be doing all the um, RFP for the contractors and all that? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm happy to have um, town involvement at any level, but that's, Ooh, that's okay. um, <laughs> I understand. Uh, but yeah, that's what they, that's what they pay me to do is to make sure the project moves along and um, 
get things like that uh, coordinated, mm -hmm. uh, circle back with, with you all from, from time to time. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you have questions or concerns, I can be the, I, I am the lead point of contact at the RPC for this, for the project in mm -hmm. general. Um, and Michael will be your main contact I, I here. I the town, yeah. I could be the town mm -hmm. contact person. And, and we'll probably be bugging Chuck about it too a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from Florida? Mm. Uh, we've done it before. Yeah. If they decide they want to take a snow shovel and clean that off out there and start, give me a call. I'll be back. <laughs> we'll get Ron out there with his little light. Yeah. yeah. I got an idea they won't do a lot of construction in the wintertime. <laughs> I think the town did commit to, to just kind of making sure the sway all along the, you know, Got down we that did. part of it, yeah. That was done. So that's basically been done? Uh, uh, sort of yes. naturally, but... Um, but it's you know, like complete. Get the, it is. The town pay for that already out of your just road construction budget? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, what, 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 what specifically are you talking about? Where the culvert runs under Valley Lake Road. Right. There's a collection basin, right. stone line, and then right. there's a ditch down to that's kind of natural we still, swale. There still needs to be another sediment pond at the end of that stone swale. Yeah. We didn't, that's not been constructed. Right. And, <coughs> and um, so this infiltration basin, when there's a real heavy rain flow, it, it's designed, it's like an overflow, mm -hmm. and that's the only time that water will really go into the ditch along the, the ball field. Because um, the infiltration basin is designed to take Water, storm water that comes into it and um, infiltrate it into the ground um, around it. As long as the manhole stays clean. As long as the manhole stays clean, which is another town commitment to, to keep to that. make this work. Mm -hmm. What about the runoff above the entrance to the school on the on the slope going That's up? That's coming here. Huh? That's coming That's into coming that. into this system. It's From coming. Valley Lake Road. So it basically covers the Valley Lake Road. Um, from Diana's house down pretty close to, to where the, the driveway is. To the driveway. To the driveway, yeah. Yeah. And then that water will cross underneath. And everything the, in the parking lot. Yeah. And like I said, we've got... Well, we the parking lot's crowned that way to, to push. To, yeah, it push is, it except the over in the very corner. And okay. it was, but it settled, and we need to go back and fix it. But that's... So, what, our effect. so what's going into towards the east to the other settling pond or this road now is tipped so all the water is supposed to go across the road and into that sediment pond by Ron's right. driveway and then hopefully filter out before it goes into the brook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you and talked it has about, so far. But you talked about going from the parking lot down like towards yeah. the no, not towards the right. annex? No, oh, right okay. up here on top. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, all right. There's it's one spot that it's project. settled and the water's going down around mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we need to bring that back up and then everything is going to oh. come this way. Oh, okay. Nothing will be going towards the annex. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or the Kingsbury branch. Or the Kingsbury branch directly. Mm -hmm. Well, it will, but it's going to be well, it's going to be indirect. way over here. It's going to be indirect. <laughs> through the and, it's, yeah. and it's going to be through a um, vegetation ditch, so everything that's going that way should be clear water by the time that it ever mm -hmm. gets down there. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And if it's not, the swamp will clear it out anyways. <laughs> so Hong Lu is a suck it up. 99% <laughs> of the phosphorus and uh, essentially all of the suspended solids uh, are right. the design. Plan for the project. Mm. So cost to the town. Nothing. nothing. To the town. Um, We're 100% grant. Well, matched. I just want to be really clear because that's mostly right. right. Um, but <laughs> there is the obligation for the the swale. Uh, that's a town. That's the town uh, up to the town to de design and, and implement, mm -hmm. and then the ongoing operations and maintenance. Wait a minute. Uh, what what swale? The swale That's what that, we just talked about. The swale that they're in the backside of the ball field. Back oh. The swale they That's in operation that. now. Okay. But down the road five years, you may need to clean it. Maintain it, yeah. But as far as construction, that's not included. It's done. Part of the... That's, but that's the, done. Yeah, okay. there's nothing to do. It's already there. Yeah. 
So the the really over the the longer term, ten or fifteen years, I'd have to look at the the report, um, the hundred percent design. But mm -hmm. um, over the next ten or fifteen years, the town is committed to mm -hmm. um, you know cleaning out the uh, the sediment filters with the mm -hmm. excavator, however you mm -hmm. you choose to do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's all like again. That's written into that plan and is intended to be work that can be done by the road crew. So it's not free. Um, mm -hmm. I want to be really clear because the town is still paying the road crew to do that work unless mm -hmm. you know you're going to volunteer to do that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we'll assume that that's not going to happen either. So mm -hmm. they're paying for the operations and maintenance of the project. As far as the the construction, uh, my contribution, the uh, engineering um, services firm, that that's all covered under mm -hmm. the the grant itself. Yeah. Any other comments? Questions. So just to Brady, there's no match other than our commitment. Right. I just wanted to, to maintain it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the right word to use as well. Yeah. Should be just a stroll to fire. <laughs> I mean we designed a, the catch basin big enough so we pull a grate, we can stick a bucket down in there and clean it completely with a clean out bucket. Mm -hmm. Put the grate back on it, do that twice a year. Check the ditch once a year, and I, it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, what um, do you need from us? A vote or something? A yeah, a vote to. Um, actually, Brian should answer that question. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, <laughs> if uh, I guess a, a vote indicating that you're on board with proceeding with the with the project would be uh, a good next step. I'll make a motion to approve the Valley Lake Road School Storm Runoff Infiltration System Implementation Funding Project. You gonna second that, Diana? Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you. Michael has my contact information. Yeah. So do reach out if you have questions. I've got a question about um, aprons along these roads, and I don't know. You work for the state, right? I work for the Regional Planning Commission. Oh, all right. You probably can't help me that. I'm going to skate right out of here with you. Right. I don't go. blame you. Go, man. Go. Go, man. Go. Go. Thank you, Brian. Nice to meet you. Bye. Thanks, Brian. Town Clerk's report. Wait. Were, did, what? Were you saying something else? I'm about good aprons? right now. You don't want to talk about aprons? Okay. Uh, I will when it's my turn. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Chris, could you pass me that water? Yes. Thank you. Recordings are still coming in very steady. We have a whole complete schedule this week that's booked solid for researchers to come in to do their research. Mm, neat. And I have made it so research is by appointment only from here on out. No more drop-ins. Mm. Just Even if they drop in and there's nobody there, can they make an appointment right then? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, absentee ballots, I believe it's 64 of those that I have mailed out so far mm. for the primary election on the 9th of August. I've gotten about 30 of them back. And I went to a training in Waterbury for election training last Monday. I'm doing an online training again tomorrow. I have one in Newport Wednesday night. Hmm. And then I have another online on Thursday. Wow. These are like election related? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because the tabulator is a new tabulator. In the um, the other machine there for people with disabilities, like for their eyesight and mm -hmm. whatever, that's all new and got to be set up also. Mm -hmm. And I have to have both of those completely up and running before the primary. What's the role of the Civil Board of Authority now with the, with these changes? You'll still be counting. <laughs> And providing, you know, ballot clerks if she needs them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But hopefully this new tabulator is going to make it so the majority of it's going to be counted right through that tabulator. Right. So it won't be late, late night. 
But do we have to, are we then counting each ballot to confirm that the tabulator yes. was right? No. Yes. <laughs> huh? No? Yes? <laughs> That'd be fun. Hmm. Anything else? Um, no, I think that's it. Thank you. Oh, wait, yes. We got in that survey for the Coleman Parker. It came in today, I recorded oh, it today. Right. Oh, cool. Okay. So there is a photocopy piecemeal in case somebody wants to see that. Interesting. I'll take a look at it. Fill me in a little more. The spur up there? Yeah. This survey does is not a survey of the lot. It's just a survey of the right of way. So it, the end of the lot is. Can I look at it? Yeah, it looks different. But it's different. Too. I mean, there's not two copies. There's a. Is that two copies? It's it is two copies, but it's the same. Right. Because I didn't get all of the writing on one of the copies. I want to make sure right. I had okay. all the writing. Okay. Because I had another goal around with. Those people up there that have bought that triangle. Yeah. Mm. They were up there trying to put a 17 foot camper up on it. Yeah. And I told them, unless the end of that pole was 25 feet away from the center of that road and the tail end was 25 feet from the other side, that I would be back after. Why, why 25? Because that's 10 right away. That's 10 right away. Yeah, but it's okay. But it, it's, for zoning, it's 65 feet. With okay. a camper? Yeah. Well, okay, not if they're going to... Yeah. Yeah, they're probably going to leave it, if they're not going to leave it there. Well, they couldn't get it off the road either end enough, so they took it away. Yeah. I, I would because buy that I, to yeah. I told them that I would be back after it. Yeah. That was a Friday morning, and I would be back after it Friday okay. afternoon if they left it. All right, good. So... And you had fees associated with <laughs> storage and... Uh, with the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't want no part of them. Yeah. Leaving the second one. Mm -hmm. Also, it worked. It, it worked. I there one time. It must have been a Friday morning because I was going up the hill, and they were trying to put put something in. Yeah. There. And then when I went back later in the afternoon, it was gone. So that was good. Well, luckily, Karen was home that Friday, and she says oh. to me, she says, "Did you see that camper go up the hill?" And I said, "No, I just mm -hmm. barely got back." Mm -hmm. So I went up to see, and they mm -hmm. were trying to put it off the road. Up. In fact, Jim came back and told me about it too. Uh -huh. And I went up and told him that unless the end of that pole was 25 feet off the road, that it was leaving. Uh -huh. And I figured probably you people would hear something about it, but obviously you haven't. Nope. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Well, the, they should have been talking with the zoning administrator, but if they haven't, then. Yeah. <laughs> back. And to the tail end of your report, before you say anything, that railing would be up before the ninth. Oh. Oh, on the town hall? Yeah. I Thank you. I was thinking about it the other day and said, oh, <laughs> Robin's going to say something about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be up. Okay. Nice. <laughs> I didn't mean to break in, but I was no, that's perfect. That's, that that's, that's good. That's good. Brandy? Are you with that? Yep, I think so. Uh, over the past two weeks, um, bills that were signed today for payroll, it was $9,757.16. Accounts payable, $9,472.82. Um, income for um, cash receipts, uh, $1,176.70. Uh, that includes land records, recording, certificates, copies, zoning, vault fees, marriage license, uh, Green Mountain cards, copies, and records restoration. Um, electronic transfers into our checking. Um, we received $187.50 of traffic fines and from the state of Vermont, $18,512.64, which is our first installment of the class two and three roads for the highway. Uh, delinquencies, 
totaling $4,159.38. Um, so now starts um, the goodies of, with the CPA. Um, they have created, um, it's kind of like a Dropbox that I'll be sending um, a lot of the records digitally to them. Um, and then he will be setting up an appointment with me to come in and go over um, the paper copy part um, of my job that I file into the vault. Um, other things I wanted to discuss uh, digitizing records, but that is part of ARPA. Um, and my justification to digitizing our records is we are booking a week out in advance of signing up for people in the vault. The other thing is I had a personal, um, I had an attorney that was doing a research on me um, that for the piece of property we purchased in 2016 and the index cards do not exist. Mm. So by going digital, they will find the ones that are missing and create them. Mm. Um, so therefore, attorneys don't have to come back when stuff isn't there or filed correctly. And who's, uh, I'm sorry, who's, who's uh, correcting or uh, that? Um... I fill out an application for ARPA money mm -hmm. to go digitizing, going back 40 years for the land records, mm -hmm. um, index cards, um, there's the possibility of listers cards being digital, so that um, in COTS system, mm -hmm. um, I did research on three different vendors mm -hmm. that deal with that. COTS is the most friend friendly user um, system where an attorney or Joe Schmo can get online, um, click what they want, put a name in, it would pop up. Everything underneath that one name would pop up. They pay for the fees and then they have their copies and don't need to come in and touch all the records. Um, that way pages wouldn't be missing. They would last longer. And pages? There is a page missing out of one book at the vault, in the vault. Mm. Out of 80 books. <laughs> but the index cards um, was really, yeah. Antiquated. Yeah, they should have been in there for either name, the seller and the buyer. There will be opportunity when we go through all the app, our applications to probably have more explanation on that. So, other than that, I am all done. Thank you. That's yes, uh, we're really coming <laughs> into uh, the modern times, aren't we, in mm. terms of uh, record keeping? Hmm. Highway Department Report. Okay. Where do you want to start? Uphill. <laughs> <laughs> It'll run downhill fast. <laughs> <laughs> I met with Nick Myers. Mm -hmm. Balance Gahagan up there. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he would like a culvert put in the Nichols Pond Road mm -hmm. going up to Gahagan. Mm -hmm. And it needs it. Mm -hmm. It certainly needs it. Did you say one? Did you say one eight culvert? culvert. Oh, yep. okay. Well, it'll be 30 feet of culvert, so it'll be a culvert and a half, but mm -hmm. it's all in one spot. It's just one, okay. Yeah. And it needs some three inch dense grade put up there. That road's in rough shape. It might can contest to it. Yeah. I, um, I yes. And I told him that I thought it could happen, but I wanted to okay with you folks before we started. Did he offer to pay for it or anything like that? Or help in any way? Mm -hmm. okay. Nope. It's class four road. We need to maintain the, cl the culverts on a cl class four road. And mm -hmm. this one definitely needs a culvert. And how much you s estimate that might cost? Oh, I don't know. The culvert's probably four or five hundred now. And the problem is digging it. Hmm. And I'm thinking that in all fairness to the town crew, the way things are going and everything else, that I'll go up and dig it with my excavator and put it in. It'll probably cost 
three to four hundred for me to go up and dig it and put it in, and plus the price of the collar. Was there any talk about the ditching and where the water's going? I'm going to, if I go up, I'm going to fix that at the same time. Okay. So I'm guessing there's probably a day's work up there for my excavator. Do you know that the Cahagan property, what used to be, um, is it all just the Myers? Does, is it all, is, is yeah. it, yeah. do they use it for anything, uh, for events or anything yeah. like they used to? Well, they, not, they, the, not the main house. No. They the main house is trash. The patterns, they do. Like the previous Cahagan. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a lot with snow machines and cross-country skiers and yeah. they want to get it where he plows it himself. But right now it would be goddamn near impossible to plow and have a decent road up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want our approval to use you as a contractor, I think I should make that motion and anybody else cares. Well, what I want to do is and have Tim, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. We've got the, the mower machine fixed for the loader. Mm -hmm. And Greg is trying to do as much of that as he can. So Tim is hauling sand. What I'd like to do is go up and work with my excavator mm -hmm and have Tim haul some three-inch dense grade and I'll straighten it up enough so they can get over it with a, with my excavator and then we'll put some three-quarter inch on it and mm -hmm. I'll go up with a grader. That's what I'd like to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you would just, the grade, it would grade just to that, uh, up just as far as that work was done? Yes, it actually it would only go from Nichols Pond Dam Road mm -hmm back down to the foot of the hill in that low spot there. Mm -hmm. Up around the corner to Hybrid Town Line. It's in pretty good shape. I don't know if I'd do anything with mm -hmm. that this year. But I'm thinking you're going to put $3,500 to $4,000 into it. For what? Again? Me putting a culvert in. All the work. All the yeah. work, yeah. Okay. And, and the material. Mm -hmm. And Hardwick maintains the road to their town line and actually a little bit into Woodbury there's a turnaround mm -hmm. there that they use. Well the deal them. is, and I haven't heard it from both sides, but okay. if we get the road straight around where Hardwick can get a truck up through there, mm -hmm. they will plow it to the Nichols Pond yep. road, Nichols Pond Dam Road. Dam road. Yeah. Really? Really? Yeah, for Myers because they figure renting the cabins and stuff, everybody's going to be going to the restaurants and buying groceries and yeah. gas and yeah, David whatever. Yeah, David the wow. town manager has made that offer um, yes. previously. Mm. And to me, I, I'm not sure how much Woodbury get out of it. We get a lot of taxes out of it. Uh, as far as restaurants and stuff like that, we probably won't get anything out of it. I can't believe that's the town's job. It will, hmm. it will certainly help the Small businesses. So around. we would. Uh, Local economy, yeah. So the town. So Hardwick would ask our permission to plow that road in the winter. Yeah, and it won't cost us anything. Good. That's just a. Mm -hmm. And that goes all the way up to uh, the access to to Nick Nichols up the. To the to going down to, to the, the dam. Pond. Yeah, the dam road. Right. The dam yeah. Road. yeah. To the dam road. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick plows the rest of it from the dam road out to Cahagan. He, well, he will. Mm -hmm. um, he could. He, right now, he plows all the way from Hardwick Town Line uh, yeah. to Gahagans. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. the, in the winter, the, snow, the cabin that they rent out uh, for snowmobilers is pretty much right there where the right the one on the road to the dam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he's hoping to rent some of the ones down by the ponds. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that's where we're at with that. Um, do we want to make approve you? You want to make the, a motion? Well, I just wanted or to want approve to the, you know, using Chuck as a subcontractor, or whatever, if that was necessary, since she's not talking about doing it for free on payroll, right? Right. <laughs> the rest um, of it, I don't you know. I don't know. It's a lot of money for. We don't. Have well, the thing of it is, you went from Gahagan. Up through to Nichols Ledge turnaround mm -hmm. with three inch and inch grade, you went the whole length. 
and there's absolutely nothing up there except nickel ledge. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it seems kind of senseless for us to put that money into that road from mm -hmm. Nichols Dam Road up through there and not fix the bottom half so that the campers can get to the pond and also be decent to go to Nichols Ledge. Mm -hmm. Was that done out of the Class 4 road budget? Yes. Yes. So we've still so the class four road budget is still like we just started. There's four thousand dollars. There's still money in class four. Yeah, but it's the whole thing, the whole budget is only like how much? I think we cut it back from it was three thousand a year. For the culverts? Well, no, for no, the for class, class four. four. Class four roads. Well, you got to maintain the culverts anyway. Right. So and that road needs a culvert bad. Three thousand mm -hmm. is for. The class four and okay. culverts is six thousand. So we pretty much got it covered. Right. For the but that's for the whole year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's our class four improvement for the whole year. Mm -hmm. We haven't spent really any money on that in a while. On what that particular Nothing. road or? It's been discussed many many, many years times. now of choosing which class fours you're going to fix yep. and it never gets <laughs> put into place yep. where they should uh, be maintained because otherwise right. yeah. otherwise well, we spend a lot more money trying to actually put them back, back together up. the thing it is the one didn't just wasn't the state involved somehow with nickel ledge wanting that fixed up um no no we weren't mm -hmm. um but there are other class four roads that, you know, if they were hydrologically connected, that we could get. Grant my phone. Hydrologically this, connected. This culvert definitely is hydrologically connected mm -hmm. because when it comes off the all in banks up there, it goes right down the middle of the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's for the storm runoff on the road itself. But the, the part the state is worried about is if that runoff runs into, like, the Kingsbury, you know, any kind of. Pond surface or, water. Well, it goes into the swamp, then at the bottom yeah. of the hill. Yeah, they don't worry about the wetland there. No, so they, they, won't uh, they won't run in water. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not designated. I, I did check that out when we were first thinking about that. It's not mm -hmm. hydrologically connected at all. So, so it wouldn't make its way down to Mattville Pond? Well, it would, you know. In a roundabout way. It, yeah, it would be filtered out yeah. by the wetland there. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty major wetland that that water runs into. Um, on, an, on another sub, are the peregrines still f um, nesting on, on, on nickels? Yes, they are. Yeah. Well, that's great. We have a family as well at our swamp. Okay. Uh, peregrines? Yeah, oh. the falcons. Yeah. 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 Cool. We've watched the baby ones. Mm. Uh, They're a great bird. Mm. Yeah. Does, uh, does the peregrine program know about that? I don't think they do. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to talk to you about that some more. <laughs> <laughs> that depends if it's going to take it away from So me. the <laughs> North Road. They won't take it away from you. They just want to know about it. Where are they nesting? Down at the swamp. So we can see them fly perfectly and dive. Yeah. Hmm. At the swamp or on the old quarry ledges? On the swamp. Because they usually the don't. It might be a different kind of falcon. This is a. Yeah. Uh, here, obviously. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, on, on the subject of Class 4 road, the north road is really bad. I don't know if it has any culverts, but. A lot of people out there pay a lot of taxes too. Back with Didn't Brown, you work out there oh, last sorry. year? We have done work out there every year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're screaming now they still want more ledge. Mm -hmm. We've been taking three loads of ledge out there every year. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, from Nichols Dam Road back towards Hybrid, hasn't had any attention mm -hmm. since I was a kid following a year. So I th I always thought that North Road was too narrow for any of our big equipment. Is that it correct? Is. Yeah. That's why we take it up, dump it in a pile, and they have to yeah. do whatever okay. they want to do with it. Yeah. And if they get if they get a section fixed, I take my little truck and go over to the town garage and load a load of stuff and go up and spread it. Oh. But basically, I done that what twice last year. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just to be nice, I mean, <laughs> but um, I think I think if you're going to spend any money anywhere, that 
Nichols Pond Road is a through road and the upper part's in pretty good shape and Cabot's End is real good mm -hmm. shape, Hardwick's mm -hmm. End's in good mm -hmm. shape and I think that short stretch mm -hmm. from a damn road back towards Hardwick should have mm -hmm. some attention. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is a shortcut for people from Cabot going to Hardwick. Carter has they really? travel quite a bit. It does. Right. But right now it's Unless you went through there with a long leg mule, you'd have a good chance of being breaking a leg. Mm. It's mm. not a good stretch right now. And the camp owners would definitely appreciate Well, it's like I told Nick. I said, if we do that this year, don't be looking for anything for the next three or four years because you ain't going to get it. Mm. And the North Road, you know, the North Road is really not all that bad. It's the roads that go down to the camps that are the roads. Well, yeah, the camp roads. And, and those, are, know. those are private, those are private roads. roads. Right, yeah. right, yeah, they know that. And actually, well. that, that road, um, there's another thing that, you know, I've known about it for years, but um, the actual town road, the class four road, um, when you go, the last road that goes down to the camps, the north road goes straight, um, and then shortly there's a, a road that was built, I don't know who built it, it might have been E.B. High, um, but the actual town road goes straight there, and somebody has a cable across it. With a camper, uh, with right? With a camper, oh, yeah, and a cable on the other end of their property. And that road was totally trashed by a local logger about five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember um, Harry Daly kind of dealt with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the Cabot Road that comes that meets that road on the Cabot line, has they've thrown that road up, so the road gets even worse mm. getting down to Coit's Pond. Mm. So, but the actual town road um, is illegally blocked off, and mm. um, in, in the other road, um, which camp owners who come into Nichols or used to go down to East Long that way, um, that road, um, I don't know who built it, but it's not a town road. Um, yeah. And it's not in good shape. And it's not in good shape <laughs> either. Right? Yeah. So, mm. but anyway, that's, so, you so know, I've people, always thought we should, we should do something about the road being illegally blocked, but it's such yeah. a non-issue. Um, but those, not worth it. those homesteaders out there, are they the ones that are putting the cable across the road? No, or? they aren't. That's not them. But it's right right past their property if that happens. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those other, the second bunch of homesteaders, are they even out there anymore? They're pretty much gone now. Yeah. yeah. So, so the cable is trash. The, the mess trash is, is not yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's no, a lot of crap. And the cable, the cable isn't to their property either. This it looks like right. it might be a deer camp or something. I don't really know. I've never seen. I it the there. last time I went out in there and we put last year, uh, the town took a load of ledge up and mm -hmm. I went out and loaded it and took it in with my dump truck. Mm -hmm. And right by the young couple that are down in there. Mm -hmm. She gave me a hard time about spreading gravel down in there mm -hmm. and I pretty much told her that she'd better go back to the house and <laughs> or I'd be down here with my excavator and really mm -hmm. fix things up. Um, <laughs> then it went over through. The people were at that camper where the cable is oh. across the road. Uh -huh. Never seen one there. And I stopped and talked to them. And they were tickled right to death we were fixing the road. And I said, well, you realize your camper's right in the original town road, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, he said, we bought it as the town road was where it is now. I said, well, that's not true. But hmm. That's how that got left. Yeah, people think the other road is the town road, and it isn't. Right. Well, what bothers me is having a cable across a town road and whether and what liability that could bring if somebody ran into it. Say with their snowmobile or something like that. Well, it's happened a number of times. Yeah, I know. And that's not the only okay. class four road that has a gate. That has a gate on it, or a cable. Mm. Right. Which kind of I'm kind of curious about what the North Northeast Wilderness Trust is going to do with the Woodbury Mountain Road um, and access to that. I don't. They do they're, they're, they're not going to do a thing. That's still open. That was part town of the road. Yeah. town road. But, but is it anybody's obligation to maintain that class four road? Um, 
It's the town's office. It's the town's office. If they find out that it needs a culvert up there, get ready, buddy. Yep. We really should throw that road up into a trail. It's, we really should. It's totally it's, it's, eroded. It's, it's, it's entirely impossible and would yeah. cost tens of thousands yeah. of dollars to fix at this point. Well, it's, it's, a nice, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice well, walkable road. Well, that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. to fix that. I've, uh, I've mentioned this before, I'll mention it again, but I think it's also a liability for the town to be having this Class 4 road on their map and not having a sign that says, don't bring your car up here because... People have gone up there and gotten stuck, and there hasn't been anyone who died, but it could happen. <laughs> yeah, but I'll tell you what, if anybody heads up through there with a car and they don't know enough to turn around, they really ought to be up in there. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, It would be a good place for them. <laughs> Usually once they figure that out, there's no place to turn around. That's right. That's right. But still. Backing up. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that, that goes, as you head up in there, the ruts are mm -hmm. a foot and a half deep. Mm -hmm. If they got something to get through them, they're on their own. Yeah. Oh, when they had that oh, magazine was, article about those swamp buggies and yeah. everybody his cousin brought them up there. There's a nice sign oh. on, on uh, Old Quarry Road right by your house that says Class 4 Road not maintained ahead. I mean, how much does it cost to put up a sign? Oh, if you want to do that, we can do it. Not a problem. I have no problem doing that. Well, do you think it would help keep people from being foolish? Well, I mean, people go through the smuggler's knots with their tractor trailers all the time. Right? And your sign's on the interstate. So you yeah. think the sign at the end of a class four road's going to help? Well, it's going <laughs> to For some people. <laughs> yeah, Grammy going out through with her Mercedes Benz or something, she might turn around. Mm -hmm. But somebody going out through there with a Land Rover thinking they're well. invincible. Yeah. I found one of them up in Greensboro about three months ago. Huh. He were not visible. Huh. He had both front fenders pushed in and I had to drag him out of the chain. Oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. Anything else, Chuck? Uh, well, I want an answer on this Nichols Pond Road. Oh. Yeah, we need to vote on this. So, Miss Diana, you asked if we could well, have a vote to... first to hire Chuck as an independent contractor, and then we can actually vote on okay. whether or not we can do this. All right, so I made that motion. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Chuck, you're an independent contractor for this project, if we could approve it. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the Nicholas Braun project for a cost of up to $4,000. Cool. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you're up. All right. You're on your own. Yeah. So you got 4K. Mm hmm Thank you very much. All right. Well, so who picked up that uh, that uh, part that you needed for the uh, mower? Um, I did. You, you went in? Yeah, Wednesday morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got it Wednesday? Yeah. And we put it back together. Because I couldn't, I wasn't, you know, the Alex right. is, right. anyway. No, it was ready, so we went. I went and got it first thing. Good day. I was down there at seven when he opened. It. Back here at eight thirty, and we had it running by quarter after nine. Well, good for you. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Chuck. Right. And so, let me see. What else? We're well, up next with the sand. Yep, yeah. we've got we got a contractor coming in to take down some trees around town. Uh, one of them is a big maple over next to Gerald Dangerous Old Place. Peter, no, uh, Paul Betts. Paul Betts. Paul Betts. Yeah. Got a big maple tree over there that's mm -hmm. leaning right towards his house. Is that on, on the other side of this tree? Uh, other, other side of the road? No, just back this side on the same side of the road. Half of it went down yeah. three weeks ago or so. Yeah. And we're going to take that one down, and I don't know, we got. Eight or ten other ones around town that are yeah. dead and need to be taken yeah, down. Yeah. What's the date for that? Um, I was hoping it was going to be today. It might be tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> the way things are going this year. Hard to know. It's going to be right off though. So you're hired, but somebody else is doing that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, with a bucket truck. Okay. He's going to go up and take it from the top mm -hmm. down. Who is it? What's the name of the contractor? 
Um, his name, last name is Reno. Uh, is it Michael? Phil. Uh, yeah, Michael. Yeah. He's done it for the last Michael's two years. Cutting. Yeah, two years. The last two years he's mm -hmm. been doing it for us. So we're going to have that done. Um, we've been ditching and putting culverts in up on Wheeler Hill. Um, the two guys that we've tried to hire to run greater are his Hampson is mm. that school is right now. Mm. So I'm going to run greater for the next two days. Mm. See if we can kind of catch up on the roads. Mm -hmm. um, Greg is mowing. That's why I wanted to be able to do the ditching and the culvert up on Nichols so I, and have Tim bring me the the material in here. Mm -hmm. um, seems like I'm missing something. Yeah. No, the sand, uh, I guess we can go to that. Well, we had one more thing on the agenda. What we do? Um, the letter of support for the town's application to Vermont Housing and Conservation Board for the Cranberry Meadow wetland purchase and this was on the agenda for the last meeting but we didn't have it so I sent this around to the board and I got Peter's um, signature sorry yes. I read it <laughs> I apologize so I just wanted to make a motion that the board approves this even though it was submitted last week second motion all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. well done thank you yeah, oh, and thank goodness I found Michael Sadler. Oh, what a blessing it was. I never could have done all that last minute putting everything in the electronic format. Mm. So, yeah, um, that was great. That's a, there youth, was one that's more a thing. youth factor. That's right. <laughs> there was one more thing I was forgetting. Okay. The aprons on these town roads up through mm. here, the holes are bad between the blacktop and the aprons, and the state owns them. And there's a guy in White River that I dealt with last year, and I don't know what I've done with his telephone number. His name is Gerald something. Does he work for VTrans? Yes. And he's taken over the part of aprons and roads adjoining mm -hmm. Route 14 and stuff. And I really want to talk to him because it's their responsibility, and they need to be up here with a hot box or something. Filling them holes in. Mm. You want me to try to track them down? If, I'll do the same thing. I have a if you could. I have a V trans meeting tomorrow, so okay. I'll try to. His name is if you, if you and I can both do it. Gerald or Gerald? I don't know which. Okay. Okay. I'm still the same. It just depends on. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But if somebody could give me his number, I would really appreciate it. I'll give it a shot. Thank you. Okay, sand. 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 I. There are the two bits that came in. We can uh, open these and read them, and then if you want, we can talk about it in executive session before we make a decision. Ain't nothing I don't care. I can say anything I want to say right here. Yeah, yeah. we can say what you want. <laughs> 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 say it, man. <laughs> Which one do you have? I have gravels here. I have Ken yeah. Davis. I took a road trip today. And went to both places. Huh. And some of Kenny's argument is that he's closer than gravel is, and that's not true. There's two tenths of a difference between going from here, well, from Town Garage to Kenny Davis's, or going from here, Town Garage to Gravels. The one you woke up. He's, yes. He's always made that argument. Yeah, well, the, it's not a good argument. Mm -hmm. I went up today, he was loading trucks up there. Well, his man was loading, Kenny wasn't there, but his man was up there. And. <clears throat> I don't know, a lot of you probably don't know a lot about the way sand operates, but 
they were up there and the only way he could load a truck was he had to run the bucket all the way up the face of the sand pile mm. to get the next bucket to fall down. Mm. It just stood right there like a pyramid. Huh. So it's full clay. It's gotta be. It's the mm. only reason it'll do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. or silty clay. But either way, it's not actually what you want to put mm. on a road. Well, I'll tell you what, you get in an ice storm and put silty sand <laughs> on a road. Ooh. It's grease. Whoa. That's all it turns to. And then come spring, when you get run a grader over that and hone it again. It's still grease. You got a grease for wheat. <laughs> Here comes Ken Davis now. So let's just read the amounts and then all right. talk about it later. So this says uh, Woodbury sand for three winters, 10,000 total cubic yards, uh, 2,000 yards this year, and 4,000 yards for the next two years. Um, hey, get the aid on. Bit of 650 per yard loaded on your trucks at our pit located four miles north of on Route 14 from the junction of Route 15. Uh, two miles closer, 501 Route 14, Hardwick, Vermont. We are fin furnishing winter sand to Walden, Hardwick, and Cabot. And then there's some stuff here about particle size distribution, uh, price list for other products. Operating hours, opening on Monday, April 25. My wife and I have worked very hard for the past 50 years and have decided it is time to fully retire. Consequently, we are offering DCS Gravel Pit located at 501 Route 14, Elago Lake Road, Greensboro for sale. The gravel pits Act 250 and stormwater permits have recently been fully renewed for 20 years. For more information, called. <laughs> so that's that. What's this other one say? Oh. Gravel construction. Bit amount delivered. 1350 a cubic yard. Bit amount at the pit, 750. Care. Certification of liability insurance. So that's that. We can discuss it later in our executive session. Okay. Okay. Anything you want to add? Only if there's any questions that they'd like me to entertain. When you sell, do the, um, your buyer's going to like to have, probably have like to have some contracts, huh? But are they going to have to? Well, it's, a, it's, it's good to have contracts. Mm -hmm. um, there's a potential of town hydro points. They seem to be quite interested in it. In buying it? Yeah. yeah. And if I enter into a contract with somebody, then I expect them to honor it. So say in case you didn't want all your material all at once, you know, in this calendar year, then we could make a reservation in any purchase and sales agreement to honor any existing contracts that we have. And I will add that we also added Greensboro to it uh, last week. Mm -hmm. So you know, we have four, four towns that are buying. Yeah. Walton seems to be about done. Hardwick seems to be about done. Uh, we've got manpower and equipment enough so that if you need the material, you want it all this year, mm -hmm. we'd do it. Mm. If you enter into a three-year contract, then I'd like to always have a reservation that if somebody like the town of Hardwick does buy it, mm -hmm. then it'd be between you and them and not mm -hmm. the three of us. Mm. But that would be all dependent upon your whether or not you want to go with a three-year contract. Now you said that Walden and Hagrick are almost done. Does that yes. mean just Holland for this year almost done? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the permits that you just reapplied for, those will carry over to the new owners? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. It's with the state of Vermont. Okay. That 20-year provision is in there. 
We got them last, uh, I think it was issued last November, so it's pretty recent. Okay. Congratulations on that. <laughs> St. John's very seem to be a good outfit to work with <laughs> in comparison with some other <laughs> agencies around the state. Mm. Yeah. We'd like your business, uh, that's for sure. Uh, I th we've done still analysis for many, many years and our grid gravel versus gravels, graded gravel is very similar in content of stone versus uh, the fines and stuff like that. And as you'll see one of the spec sheets, plus I think the town of Woodbury did a civil analysis on it I Two think years. three years ago. Yeah. So they could compare what we've presented in the past to what we have on record mm -hmm. now. So Wait to hear from you, I guess. All right. So I don't really, I, I don't know as much as you guys do about this, but do you like mix the sand? Does it just come out of the bank the way it is? Do you mix it to make sure it has the right size of you know little stones? What we have, yeah, what we have to do is run it through a screen and, and sieve out all the oh. big rock. Okay. And then we have a final sieve that's a three quarter inch minus. Oh, okay. And then you can up to the graded gravel or sand mm -hmm. by the veins of, of uh, material you get into. Our pit runs very, uh, very varied uh, aspect instead of a real consistent mm -hmm. thing. It comes in layers. And mm. If I brought my phone, I could have showed you some uh, pictures of the wall in the pit that we work from. So it's it takes a uh, manpower machinery to to sieve it and then mm -hmm. to load it and well, process it. Was offered good product. Well, well, thank you. Other questions? We're, no, uh, just for, we're going to vote on uh, go into executive session and right. to decide we'll on this at the end later. of the meeting. Yeah. I, I I guess I'd like to make a comment. Uh, about the trucking mm -hmm. and the two miles. If you equate that in a mathematical figure, it will equate to about a dollar, dollar and a half per yard difference in trucking cost. Most people with a 10 wheeler are getting somewhere around 90 bucks an hour. Some are at 80, some are at 90, some are at 100. And you take the uh, analysis of uh, mathematics and it, it comes down to about a buck and a half difference in the trucking cost by that. A buck and a half per what? Ton? Uh, no, per, uh, per yep. yard. Per yard. Yard, yeah. Yeah, okay, per yard. So, mm -hmm. manpower is not cheap, trucks are not cheap, fuel is not cheap. And mm 15% -hmm. uh, savings on mm -hmm. transportation cost is something that the board mm -hmm. really should always consider when they think about the product and where they're going to get it and how close it is to the, from the source to the, to where you stockpile it. Fair enough. Thanks, Ken. Yep. I appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate we'll, uh, the opportunity to bid. Yeah. Yes. We'll, Have uh, a good night. Yep. Yeah, we'll be in touch soon. Yep. No okay. Question. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, so I have a, can I just ask a basic question about sure. between winter sand and then gravel for the ro roads? You know, he ain't get anything up there for gravel, it's worth a shit. Well, I'm just asking, but but it's they're different, right? Yeah. What, um, yes. Depends on what you're shooting for. Yeah. Well, right. I'm talking about sand coming in the winter time because you, you want you want good stuff to come right out of the the. You want it. Cl you want clean sand. Yeah. Because if you don't get clean sand with stone in it. Right. When it rains, it turns to mud. Yeah. Right on top of the ice. Mm -hmm. That's what clay does. And if you leave that and put it back into your road first thing in the spring, until that road is completely dried out, you're going to have mud. 
Mm-hmm. So this, this screening that he was talking about, the clay would still come through. Anything under three quarters of an inch is coming through. Mm-hmm. And the thing of it is, I, I don't know how his speedometer works, but I, Greg told me it was two tenths of a mile difference today, and I checked it with my truck, mm-hmm. and I got almost three tenths, but it's mm-hmm. goddamn close. It ain't two miles. Not two miles. No. And when you start putting clay on roads and turn it into mud, you think you got some overtime now in the wintertime? Mm-hmm. Because people are going to be bitching because they're mm-hmm. sliding in that mud right off mm-hmm. top of that ice. <laughs> well, the did you guys do a screen? Did you actually do a Grand Three analysis? years ago. And how did that turn out? From, the, from what I understand, it turned out pretty good because it had rained for two days and all the three-quarter inch stone had slid off that silt and landed at the bottom and that's where they took the sieve test from. But today I was down there and watched them load four trucks. And Direct off the banks or right, they screened it? No, they screened it. But he could not drive in and get a bucket full without lifting that bucket all the way up and that knock the next bucket full down. And sand, I, if you've been around sand at all, you know that you're not going to hold like, more than a 30% of the grade yeah. or something. Yeah, the angle of repose is really shallow. Yeah. Okay. And angle of repose. The, uh, that's, that's well, it's Stegner's book. Yeah, but it actually means something. <laughs> so you could have a pile of sand as big as you want. Right. Right. And if it's all the same grain size, no matter how tall you make the pile, the angle will stay the same. Mm-hmm. So you might make it wider at the base. And it might get taller, but the size will stay the mm-hmm. same. But if you have a higher silt and clay content, the fines that Chuck is talking about, it allows for it to be steeper. Mm-hmm. And it'll hold more water content, making it steeper and steeper and steeper. And eventually, it goes beyond its angle of repose, which is what Chuck is talking about. And as you dig into it, mm-hmm. it collapses on itself, but it doesn't collapse the rest. Right. Meaning that its fine content is very high. Mm-hmm. And Angle of repose actually does mean something. But while Segner was also correct in the way that he used it. <laughs> and the thing that is, when you've got these guys that starting at 2, 30, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, or whenever they start, and get called out on the weekend and everything else, and all of a sudden, that silt gets stuck in that chain, and they got to get in there and go back to the shop, mm. dump out. that out, yeah. and chisel that shit out of there. If I was them, you people would be ready to be getting a phone call mm. telling you to get your ass over there and help me do this. Mm. Well, that'd be a long flight. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it for last. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for the uh, yeah, thanks for the comments. clarification on sand. Uh, it's a good one. All right. So we're now on the uh, personnel policy okay. with... Mr. Gray. So let me fire up the things here. Do you want to hang around for that? And or have you said what you would say in our executive session? I already said everything I would say. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, can I just the, quickly talk to you outside? Sure. The the vote is definitely up to you folks. But oh, we, um, but you said your piece. I did. You do have time. I better get everything. All right. Yeah. I'll be right back. You folks have a good night. Thanks, Thanks for your comments, Joe. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Thanks for all the work, too. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Break down the <laughs> Michael, have they started the building out there in the wetland? I mean, uh, Chuck did some grading and stuff. It's all ready to go. There's a meeting um, August 8th for, um, okay, there's the computer. A meeting? With the school and the committee. Oh. Peter's on it. Um, I'm on it. Um, Larry Eldred, hopefully Elizabeth Stratton will be there um, to uh, um, make a plan to, to put it together. Yeah. Ah. So the site's all ready for the, yeah. build, for the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and Larry, I think, has received the last permit. Um, oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the OS, it's you, the new superintendent, did sign off on the MOU. So, mm. so we're, we're ready to ready to build. Go to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's. See. Oh dear. Dear. So can you see this okay the way it is? We could turn the lights out. That makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, I think that would help. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, can't I see think it. it would help too. If um, we ever wanted to get our local electrician to come and have these lights on individual switches mm -hmm. um, so we could shut this light off, it would be for doing stuff like this, it would be helpful. But well, I can't see that, and I can't see this. Well, the print's very small. In paper, because um, it's dark. <laughs> uh huh. And my I, I should have brought my new cell phone. It has a flashlight. I figured out where the flashlight well, is. <laughs> we could try the lights on. Uh, so well, um, maybe you should just read it, so because because I well, can't read that. What the paper? Have you got your copy? No. <clears throat> Can if you were closer, could you read it? Uh. I'll follow the bouncing ball if someone wants to. Um, There's no bouncing ball in this program, but. What page is that on? So this is a table of contents. Um, oh. I had to switch this over to a different um, word processing oh, oh thing, and it's, well, I don't know what it did here, but um, I've got to, I guess I've got to break down and pay for uh, Microsoft Word. Um, so this is the beginning of it. And unfortunately, if actually, I was going to ask if if any I think I did send you a copy of the personnel policy mm -hmm. digitally. If you could send me the copy back, because what I put this in um, this uh, Libra Office writer, and um, for some reason I don't have the original anymore. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, I'll, I can re I can send it back. Easily. Okay, great. I appreciate that. So. Um, so this is the beginning of it, and it's pretty basic um, for the beginning. Um, and this has all been, you know, vetted and looked at by previous select boards. All it's all been okay. Um, and these are pretty standard um, parts of a personnel policy. We basically used VLCT's model policy to. Um, in the end of revision that we did. So I'm just scrolling down through it. Um, actually, let me try to do it this way. A little slower. So tobacco use, uh, performance evaluations, which we should be doing. Um, what page are you on now? I am on page Seven. 11, according to my copy. Section 13. So there was nothing okay. before that that? There was nothing in question um, from previous select board vettings, no. Okay, so for example, on page 5, okay. the road crew is subject to the on call policy, which shall be adopted annually by the road commissioner and approved by the select board. That, that's all been approved? Um, there, so far, the road crew hasn't created an on-call policy. Right, we never have had one. So. Yeah, in fact, that's <laughs> in the beginning. So you can see, um, and this is the part that's screwed up. So, um, so guidance. We recommend that every, and this is in the VLCT language that I highlighted in yellow. Uh, we recommend that every municipality ad adopt an on-call policy to specify what activities are allowable. Mm -hmm blah, 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 um, and then in red, um, I had put in uh, select board and road crew will develop an on-call policy, which hasn't been done. Right. Um, so with okay. the select board, you know, check and grade, if you guys want to do that, um, that would be, we can put that in. Um, okay. So this other highlighted in yellow, there is a sexual harassment policy part in here, and we also have um, adopted a progressive discipline process, which is also in the um, personnel policy. We'll get to that mm -hmm. as we go through it. 
the, where we were at with this thing is the select board, um, previous select board, Paul, Chris, and I um, had been making revisions into it. Um, then we got to a final draft for ourselves. We had um, Jill Muir of the VLCT do a review of it. She actually has done a couple of reviews and it has advised us mm -hmm. in the process. Um, she did a final review. Um, this uh, previous select board um, reviewed those changes, um, made changes to the policy. And then I went through, we had a lot of things lined out and uh, highlighted. Mm -hmm. and So I went through and removed all of that and then sent a, uh, a draft, kind of a final draft to the VLCT for the lawyers to review. Um, and there are a few thing comments that they made towards you know in a, in a small part of the policy. Um, I had a couple questions for them that they answered, um, and and we'll get to those. We'll go, go through it. You would have seen those in your copy, um, probably highlighted, um, probably in a light gray. Light like gray. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, so um, we can go through it a little bit slower if you want. So these are all, um, you know, kind of, um, one thing that's a little bit different in this policy is that this is, that the policy only covers uh, full-time and part-time employees. Um, we took out any of the language that related to um, the town clerk and the town treasurer, um, mostly in the benefits. Um, and that would be a separate uh, policy, just for, mm -hmm. for clarity in, in the whole thing. Um, and that was suggested by the LCT. Um, and there's an, another suggestion that um, Jill Muir had for, the, for any um, elected official that would be covered in the policy, which pretty much is just the town clerk and the town treasurer. So this new policy is doing away with personal leave? Um, no. Where is it in the new policy? Um, it is, uh, that's a whole separate sheet um, for the town treasurer and the town clerk that um, the, the select board and you guys need to work out together. And I'm happy to be a part of that process. But on the index, on um, what you have here, mm -hmm. even for the road crew, there's no, person, there's no personal time. No, there is personal time for the road crew. It's in here. We'll come to it. But the index is what we were looking at. Oh, the at. index. Well, the index may need to be fixed. Nothing has been done on the index at all. Um, let's see. I think they might call that might be what they call bereavement leave. We never no, had that's a, separate. That's a separate thing. That's separate, yeah. too? I mean, there's paid leave time. Yeah. I think there's the vacation leave. leave. is for when a family member passes away. Yeah. There's right. holiday leave, mm -hmm. vacation leave, sick leave. Paid so, leave. Um, personal time is pretty much under, um, in, in this area here somewhere. It's, I think it's under paid leave. Yeah. So personal time is, is addition to bereavement time? I thought that was what personal time was for. Um, for when you have to be absent for some, you know, Well, let, let's, un, let's get to that part of the policy. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. I, I can go there right uh, now. No, 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 it's fine. Okay. Um, so... So these are all pretty much standard things. Um, people employment opportunity, probationary period, that's for a new hire, new employee, conduct, conflicts of interest, um, hours of service, and that's basically um, giving you know the work hours that the road crew, because there there are pretty much our only employees. Um, section on outside employment for town employees, political activity, nepotism, alcohol and drug use, um, tobacco use, and then there's this thing on perform performance evaluations, um, personnel records, use of town equipment, Use of the town computer system. Whole big long section on that. Public <laughs> records. 
So eligibility for benefits, um, pretty much just states who is eligible. Um, and the town clerk and the town treasurer are eligible for benefits. Anyone who is benefits are also offered to the elected officials working 18 hours a week or over, if they choose, and follow the elected official agreement, um, which is in here. Um, paid leave time, right here. So that probably does need to get placed into the index, it's section 19. The index, um, probably now that we have done these revisions, does need to get updated. Um, And so, yeah, this is one um, part. So paid leave time for employees with the exception of sick time must be approved by the road commissioner. And then there's a form that we created um, that um, should go into the appendix. Um, and you can see the highlighted note of paid leave time request form. This is needed from Brandy. I know there's a form um, that exists, but it would be great to have it in the personnel policy. There was a vacation, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then the select board did spend quite a bit of time on this, this uh, section. Um, so the rest of it is suggested that employees request paid leave time on a day-for-day -day basis. Um, for example, in requesting three days off, the request should be made a minimum of three days prior. Um, and then requesting that uh, requests for leave be made in a far, as far in advance um, to give uh, to ensure uh, approval um, and, and a way of uh, facilitating the work schedules. Um, and that was kind of predicated by a former employee who would sort of announce uh, on a phone call early in the morning that they were taking the day off, um, kind of screwing things up. So. Employees refers to town highway department members only, and then it defines full-time employees, part-time employees. This is the second paragraph of paid leave time. Um, and then it breaks down for um, part-timers um, and defines things a little bit more that way. Um, and there's holiday leave time. We added Martha. Martin Luther King's birthday. Can you go back to yes. the last paragraph under paid leave time? Okay. There is a section there, the last, second to last sentence, I think. All other part time employees working, it seems to be. Work, work, yeah, there's a word missing. Working yeah. um, more than 20, okay, working. 20 hours, 20 weeks per year, so I think we could basically just eliminate the van there. Working 20 weeks per year and less than 18 hours per week. Um, so that should, that should read working less than 20 okay. weeks per year and less than 18 okay. hours per week. And that's correct in the version that I have. Okay, it is corrected. Okay. Okay. Um, shall not be eligible for paid leave time or any other benefits. This definition includes newly hired employees and those who are still in their probationary period of employment. And then it defines other people that are not included. Okay. Here's Thank that. you. Okay. So I don't know why it's um, the less than using in my version, but um, I think things got screwed up when I transferred it. That's why I'd like to get. <laughs> Yeah, I'll resend a copy. Yeah. So, the okay, holiday leave, um, and then there is a statement at the end, which has been in the personnel policy, that there is another additional paid floating holiday that uh, an employee can uh, connect with either Thanksgiving or Christmas, um, but not both. You know, Thanksgiving usually lands on a Thursday, so if an employee wants to take a Friday off. Um, this is another part that we, uh, the select board, um, decided to eliminate. Um, Full-time employees will receive holiday pay at their regular rate of pay. 
um, but they cannot count the holiday hours paid towards actually our actual hours worked when determining overtime compensation. So if they have a paid Monday off, um, let's say in the winter, and um, those eight hours or nine hours, is it eight or nine hours? Eight. 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 Holiday hours are eight. Okay, so those eight hours that they have um, received holiday paid for, they can include those as eight hours of work towards overtime. And the previous policy was a little wishy-washy that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, And it defines more, a little bit more about holiday pay when, when um, employees have to work on that day, which sometimes happens during the winter. Vacation leave. Um, Sick leave. Leave. Go back. Okay. Hang on. Uh, Let me get there. The first. Where do you the, want me to go back? The last to? paragraph under section before you got to section twenty. Okay. So. An employee 19. is entitled to take unpaid leave for going to annual meeting. Yes. Um. Do you think, as a town, that we should maybe? Be more generous with that and encourage people, town employees, to go to town meeting and not have to take time off? Um, I mean, they usually don't want to. to get paid leave to go, go to town. No, no, they just have regular payroll. They don't have to take leave. Just, mm. just a thought. Don't well, interrupt. If they can't I'm take leave, then they have to work. They have to work. Sorry. Okay. All right. Here, take it easy. Yeah. Tip. Um, I mean, we, it could say. Well, they could have to, you know, they, if it's in the middle of the winter. They might. paid leave from unemployment. Yeah, but they can't just. If you tell not them they work. can't take leave, then they can't. They go can't leave work. Meeting. Well, okay, I was just thinking maybe we should just encourage them to be able to come to town meeting and still be on payroll. Okay, well, that would be paid right. leave. That's paid leave. Paid leave. Mm. Okay. Um, if the select board would like to change that, I, I mean, that's up to you. Well. I don't know, I've been through this so many times, I'm a little jaded, <laughs> so. Um. And with the whole town meeting kind of up in the air of the committee and discussion on yeah. Saturday. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that in the future our town meetings are going to be on Saturday. But. I so, so, um, so they won't have to take leave. <laughs> but if, if you guys want to discuss it and make the change for paid leave, um, well, maybe the previous uh, board already discussed it. I don't know. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we, we would have. Yeah, this is pretty okay. Much, so, and this, the, and this was pretty it. much out of the VLCT model mm -hmm. policy. Yeah, mm -hmm. we 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 wordsmithed it a little bit, but mm -hmm. overall. Okay. Yeah, we we um, pretty much made the model VLCT policy uh, work for mm -hmm. Woodbury mm -hmm. um, as best we could. Yeah. So here's vacation leave. Anything on that at all? Does it say when a new employee? Starts accumulating, or is it? Do they just get it in one chunk? Um, they start. It does say it somewhere. I can't tell you exactly where that is. Oh, it writes last sentence. Accrued vacation time will, will only be paid out when an employee term, uh, with the exception of any employee who terminates during their probationary period, um, will not be entitled to compensation for any accrued vacation time. But then it says vacation time shall be credited July one of each year. Yes. So, okay, so they get the whole thing at once. You know, that's the way it's always been, I guess. Huh? And it occurs. Not accumulating a day a month or something like that. No, we did discuss that quite a bit. Um, okay. There were yeah. a couple of scenarios, and this mm -hmm. was definitely this was, the simplest. This was the simplest solution. So when you have a new hire, yes. do they get their vacation time? Yes. Right, yes, then, but then they, it says they can't no, take it during their probation period. They get the vacation time after the six-month probationary period. So okay, they don't right. get it. So they're accumulating it. 
Yeah. But they can't use it. Right. And if they quit before that, they don't get it. They don't get anything. So, if, but on their, if they finish their six month probation, then they've got their chunk of. They have already government. accumulated if, vacation yeah. that they can immediately okay. take advantage of. If the town right. decides that they have, you know, that they're after the probationary period that they shall continue mm -hmm. as a, an employee full time or, or part time, mm -hmm. um, then they are eligible for any benefits. Okay. Thank you. So sick leave. Um, again. Uh, and this is where the VLCT lawyers did make some comments. Um, I have some questions for them. And those are highlighted. Um, and then the changes that um, the previous select board had put in are um, written here in red. So um, one of the parts of this um, sick leave is that part-time employees will receive sick time on a prorated basis. You'll see that quite a bit for the, mm -hmm. uh, in different parts for the, the part-timers. Um, so the lawyer um, mentioned that this could be, I don't know why I can't get all the text in there. Um, what will I screw up if I try to do that? Not much. There, that fits. Um, it would be confusing if the exact ratio was not spelled out for each part-time employee depending on their hours. Um, so it might be good for us when we, if we do have part-time employees in the future um, that we actually um, tell them um, you know, specifically um, what, they're, what they can expect. Um, if, if they are part-time and on a regular schedule that's pretty easy. Like yeah. if you, 18 hours out of 40 is uh, easy to figure. But if they're not on a regular schedule, then yeah. Anyways. What we had in here previously was, you know, we, we kind of used the example of um, because the two part timers basically were roughly on a 20 hour a week um, mm. part time schedule. Is is that we broke it down, you know, this is what you get if you're a full-time person, like full-time employee should learn 120 hours, a part-time employee, and then we did mention that it would be prorated, and then we gave the example of a part-time employee working 20 hours would receive 60 hours of sick time annually, and um, it was suggested that that was a little bit too bulky. confusing, yeah. bulky, and that we just mentioned on a prorated basis and one of the lawyers just mentioned that, you know, once we do have a, if we, if and when we had a full-time hire and they were working uh, whatever hours that they work, is that we just spell right out to them and we could do it in writing or just verbally the road commissioner could just say, okay, you're working 20 hours a week, so therefore you have uh, 60 hours of sick time. Um, you know, we could actually have a printout that is specific to that employee um, so it would just go into the part-time contract, is what we had talked yeah. about. Yeah, so they would have something written. Um, and then we had a question, um, this was mostly a question on my part, because uh, there were like conflicting information that I was given about um, the maximum amount of sick leave that may be accumulated. Um, the standard that I was seeing everywhere was 240 hours um, for a full-time employee, and then there was a section, this, a bold and yellow line that was in the VLCT model policy that um, mentioned that an employer is not allowed to limit the total number of hours of leave. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted the lawyers to tell me which, which mm -hmm. should be in here and, and the lawyer said no, this is an appropriate amount of sick leave for an employee to accrue so it was a useful huh. provision. So mm -hmm. my thinking, my plan was to um, Keep the line that's in red, the maximum amount of sick leave that may be accumulated is 240 hours for a full time employee, and then just delete the, um, the yellow stuff in yellow um, along with my questions. And then, you know, again, mm -hmm. here's the other part prorating the maximum mm -hmm. for part time employees is prorated. Um, and then uh, closing all accrued or unused sick time will not be paid out at the time of separation, um, which is sick leave does not... Um, does not transfer. Does not transfer. Right. And the lawyer 
confirm that. Um, we had a final statement, and this was in the VLCT model policy, and um, maybe I should take that and stick it up with that sentence in, at the end of the previous paragraph. Um, but there would be no payment of credits for unused sick leave at the conclusion of an employee's employment. And, um, I don't know what that of credit means, but... Well, um, of credits is um, how many uh, hours of sick leave that a person has accrued. So let's say a full-time okay. employee had okay. accrued 120 hours of sick leave, um, <coughs> and then they um, cease their employment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't they don't get paid for that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, now, short-term disability, does the town pay for that, or does the employee themselves pay for that? Um, that is really through um, NIS meets, uh, it's where real life, uh, but does the town pay for that? We or do, technically, Indi every month. Indirectly, we, we pay for it. It's part of the benefit package. It's part of the benefit package. So it's would a, it be cheaper for you not to have a cap on that sick leave versus having to pay out out of disability? Hmm. Um, because you're not going to have to pay out when the employee gets done anyway. Right. Mm. It's a good question. We're using sort of the model that... I mean, because the state of Vermont, you can accumulate as much as you want in sick leave. It's true. Yeah, and this, that's where this, the, this is that's where where the language is coming from. confusing for me and that VLCT had sort of advocated for two different things. Um, but I would think if it's cheaper to let them build up their sick leave versus then... Let's say we have a road crew member that goes out on short-term disability for three months. Is it going to be cheaper to pay out of his sick time versus out of that disability? Well, they all have 240 hours of sick time Does, but, if, but, if they've accrued that. But who, and they haven't used it yet. Right. Who pays the short-term disability? I thought that was a separate policy that we buy. We do, and we oh. pay every month. Pay every month. Yeah. For it. yeah, and we do have a disability. Oh, so you think it not have the policy at all? But, but short term, isn't that in with all that? It's life in here. I can go right it to is. it if you want. It's with life and disability. Life. No, I was just wondering if it was going to be cheaper for the town mm -hmm. to let them accumulate the sick mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Well, if we eliminated if the disability, then if they hadn't accumulated sick time and they were suddenly disabled, then they wouldn't have anything. So um, that wouldn't be so great for the employee. So that's another another part of it. Um, yeah. Let's in let's go. For, do you yeah. want to go right to the disability thing and see what that says? In um, order for for the disability to even kick in, you had to have used all your personal vacation, sick, all your benefits before they were retroactive. So is it retroactive back to what his full pay would have been, or is it a portion of that? I've never used disability, so I don't know. Okay. I, don't we have, know. I have to look at the, that part. Of the, okay. I'm sorry, I don't have it memorized. Uh, do you want me to try to get there? And see if a new I... company. Uh, okay. And I haven't had to file one with a new company. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see where This copy I have says it's page 13. Okay, yeah, my copy for some reason seems to be different. Um, so maybe it was back here before we even got here. Title and authority. Because it has sick leave and then it has bereavement and then it has short term. Yeah. So here's paid leave, holiday leave, vacation, sick leave. Um, Section 23 in the document that I have, so you page 13. Short-term right. family leave is what I have next for section 23. Yeah, is that what we're talking about? Or are we? No, we're looking no. for di disability. Oh, disability. In the, be in the benefits, crime victim leave, leave of absence without pay, military leave, jury leave, overtime.
ein. Just want to make sure Peter got his car okay. So, disability insurance. The provisions of this subsection relating to disability insurance shall apply to full time employees of town clerk and town treasurer. Um, the town pays the premium cost for short term disability insurance for employees. I have no idea what the terms of that insurance are or what the cost is. Isn't there one policy that covers short term disability and life and something else? It's those two. Just those two? Yep. So you'd have to separate that out to figure out what it costs. So here's life insurance. Because it's one company. So will apply to full-time employees. The town pays a premium cost of life insurance and accidental death and dismember my coverage for employees. I think it's all part of the package, isn't it? Is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so here's disability insurance. The provi provisions of this subsection relating to disability insurance will apply to the town clerk and town treasurer. Now this, so this is the section um, that I would love to sit down with Randy and Robin to go over. This is pretty much what, um, and I started making a, a whole separate section of it. So this is just stating that this applies to both the town clerk and the town treasurer also. Um, and the minimum hours that an employee or an elected official has to work. Um, there's no waiting period. The benefit percentage is 60%. Maximum weekly benefit is $500. Um, minimum weekly benefit is 10% of the weekly total disability benefit. And again, I don't know what those are those would be in the insurance policy. Um, and the maximum benefit period would be 26 weeks or half a year. Sorry, I'm totally lost now. Yeah, well, we jumped ahead. Um, okay. uh, this is really kind of right towards the end. And it's more of the, there's the personnel policy, and then there's the whole benefits. Um, which is uh, let's oh, okay. See. I see. Come on over group insurance. So and Table so this is kind of life insurance. starts with insurance benefits, and we haven't really labeled it yet. But so these are the different benefits that the town offers. Just uh, I just looked at the budget, and the, the whole budget for the life and disability for the is five hundred dollars. Yeah. It's, it's not it's not about very expensive. Sixty dollars a month. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then at the very end, actually, I guess that is the end of mine. So, yeah, so my copy is really kind of screwed up. I would love to get this. I sent you a copy Thanks. of the. Of actually, you know, I could. Um, the last version that we were working off of okay. from um, 21. So, um, do you want, let's get back where we were. Um, but those, those three things that with the VLC to lawyers, that's about the only thing that they offered for the policy. Um, these, all of these, let's see, let's get back to the bereavement. Jury leave, military leave, leave of absence without pay, crime victim leave, short-term family leave. Um, these were all kind of standard in the VLCT. Um, policy, and we just we put them in. Um, and this is um, this was part of the old policy over time and comp time. We pretty much. Um, really kind of worked on comp time quite a bit. Um, and that's basically um, getting time off instead of 
uh, financial like overtime pay um, where an employee can choose to um, to get paid. Um, so in accordance with the Federal Fair Labor Standards Act, the town compensates non-exempt employees um, at the rate of one and a half hours for each hour actually worked in excess of 40 hours in any work week. So we pay anybody working overtime gets paid a time and a half. So um, with the comp time, it would be basically time and a half an hour. So one hour of uh, comp time would be equal to one and a half hours. Of, um, in place of overtime, pay the town in its discretion may provide non-exempt employees with comp time subject to the following conditions. Um, the comp time is earned at a rate of one and a half hours for each hour worked in excess of 40 hours, actually worked in a work week, and that the employee may accrue a maximum of 40 hours of comp time. Those are the two. Um, the first one is pretty standard, and the second one, uh, I believe that the comp time accrued, um, it didn't have a limit on the amount, um, which was kind of a liability to the town. Um, mm -hmm. Morning. Um, so any employee that's accrued 40 hours of comp time will be paid overtime compensation for additional overtime hours work. Um, and then it kind of just there's some limits on how that comp time can be can be used to still uh, allow the road crew to function. And again, it has to go through, um, the road commissioner has to grant um, the request. And pretty much has to, the comp time, they have to follow the um, procedures that we wrote out for paid leave time. A list of conditions for um, getting comp time. And then uh, harassment and discrimination is pretty standard in any personnel policy. Um, sexual harassment, again, that's pretty much standard for any municipal policy. You might want to take your name off. Yeah, there. I gotta take my name <laughs> off. You guys can decide whose name you want there in my place. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, and then this is, uh, the section 31 is, a, um, again, um, suggested by VLCT. It's in the old personnel policy, in the previous revision um, that we did back in 2012, I think, or actually 2017. Um, um, it kind of outlines how um, uh, an employee will be um, disciplined for one um, and leading up to, these are the steps that could lead up to um, the person being, um, them having their employment terminated. Um, and, by, and it's pretty much a given that you have to follow these procedures to not have the terminated employee um, uh, come back and uh, um, either collect unemployment at the town's expense, um, or, and et cetera. So, um, and this is the process for termination, which is again pretty standard. Steps again that need to be taken in order to um, not have the town legally, legally, legally liable for uh, terminating an employee. Um, and, then, uh, and that's, that, this is, so this is the personnel policy, and then the benefits package is, a, is another um, part that does seem to be kind of missing. Um, okay, this is for the employee to sign after they've read the personnel policy, and this is the form. And this is the uh, um, another appendix for an agreement um, between the town and elected 
officers um, that are um, part of the personnel policy. Um, and it's pretty much um, is for, uh, it's not for termination or anything like that. The, um, the select board cannot do that. Um, it's more for any of the part of the benefits that uh, an elected official um, qualifies for and chooses to take. And the DLC recommended that um, the elected officials sign this form, um, an agreement form, which I haven't done anything to Woodbury, uh, Woodbury Eyes at all. It's just that's what comes in the thing. And then this was the form um, that I was working on. Um, describing the different benefits that both elect, elected officials and town employees are eligible for. I'm curious why it says agreement by independently elected officer to be bound by the personnel policy. Um, because I mean, I, I understand you have to be, you know, should have a separate policy that addresses your benefits. But are there other all other parts of this policy that might apply? Um, no, only the benefits, really. Um, I suppose sexual harassment or any, any of that type of um, mm. stuff could be applied. Yeah, tobacco use. I mean, that would be. <laughs> this was suggested <laughs> by the LCP, yeah, the yeah. jail and Muir, yeah. that, um, that there be so a. Well, if they don't object to it, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if, mm. if any of this. I mean, technically, a lot of the stuff that's in the first file policy uh, applies to any appointed any appoint or anybody. elected official yeah. or employee. Um, you know, especially in regards to you know, sexual harassment or employee harassment, conflict of interest, outside of political yeah. activity. In fact, we used to send every appointed. Nepotism. Official um, parts of this that, that you know, that, um, asking them to mm -hmm. you know, kind of abide by that. So it, it's not finished yet, um, and I, I, I am going to um, I guess pay for Microsoft Office so that I can work on this thing on the laptop um, instead of my. Um, PC computer. Um, so should the uh, should the town pay for that? No, I'll pay you for sure? it because I'll, I'll have other uses for it. Okay. And I don't plan on doing this mm -hmm. stuff for the town okay. forever. So. Do you think um, maybe this bereavement leave should just be changed back to personal leave and not have it be so strict that it has to be a close family member if you're going to a funeral? Well, there is personal leave in here. Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought Robin just said there wasn't. Well, no, there isn't. Well, we just looked at it. Um, just look. Personal time. Uh, time. Where is it? It's paid leave time. This pretty much addresses all of it. Um, and I think we, as a select board, previously, did we eliminate personal leave time? We cut it out because we had, we well, had all these other. We had all these other types of leave. Right. So, so we you may be looking at an old. We stuck with paid leave time. I don't know what you guys are looking at. Well. I have this one. It's on the pay stubs? <laughs> it's, paid, it, it, it's personal time. Yeah. On the pay, pay stub is personal time. Well, now it is because we're still, we still got that old, this policy. Mm -hmm. This policy probably still has. Yeah, I'm not sure. Michael, I think it would do us good to uh, have one version that we're all really comfortable with. Personal time. Right. And whatever draft that is, we should work off of that one. Okay. Because it feels like right now we've got about 10 different drafts floating right. around out there. Yeah. So 
So Perhaps I'll send you, you send I'll, se I'll, I'll send you that one. Okay. I'll send you that one. And, and I think that should be the most updated one that we worked on as yeah. a select board, which I think is the most updated one. It is. Um, yeah. And this, let's... I lost, when I moved this into Libra Office Writer, um, something happened to yeah. some of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's uh, let's agree to work off of that draft. Okay. And I'll send that around to everybody. How's okay. that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so send it to Robin. And Absolutely. Else. Yeah. Every, mm -hmm. I want everybody to see yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. And um, and then maybe sometime I can meet with you too, and especially Brandy, so that we can. There's a. In the older um, personnel policy, there was a, just a benefits page that listed everything. It's pretty outdated now. Um, so that it would be good to update that. Um, and it would be good to go over um, the, um, um, the section that is pretty much just addressing the town clerk and the town treasurer the, your, your benefits. Um, so. And that I don't think is probably in yours either, because that's a new, new thing. Um, with this new revision, it basically took out, there were parts where it would talk about the full-time, part-time employee, and then it would say, um, and then there would be a part addressing that the town treasurer and the town clerk, um, you know, all mm -hmm. in the same section. Mm -hmm. and it was advised that we take those parts out for the town clerk and town treasurer and have that be a whole separate uh, piece to the policy, to the benefit package. Um, so it was a, you know, kind of uh, too much said in um, too many different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so that town employees could have just a straight thing for them that would be easier to understand. And, um, Sounds like a plan. OK, all right. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> yeah. uh, Randy, uh, your report, you didn't mention that there was a grand list. Do you have that number, Randy? I don't. I'm not a lister. But they gave it to you, no, right? You I didn't. thought you said they did. I gave, I left in that packet the form of, that the select board was supposed to sign at your special meeting. And I think we did, didn't we? Yes, you did. Okay. And that's all that Ron gave. And that was, okay. and that had the number on it? You signed it, didn't you? Oh, right. I memorized it and then I signed it. <laughs> I was just the messenger of, of a lister giving okay. it to me to be all right. Okay. I, I don't know the number. I'm sorry. I wish I, I, I don't. I don't have it written down. No. Okay. Well, next time. So, Mr. Vice Chair. You want to move us along to other business? Next up for ARPA distributions. Should so, we hold a special meeting and invite all the groups requesting funds? I think it's a great idea. So I've got, I noticed what they did in Hardwick, which was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. They just listed all their applicants and had them all come into a meeting, and I thought we might. Think about something like that. I think it's reasonable. I think we should high grade them to maybe to a degree. Hmm? I think we might want to high grade them to a degree. I sort of sorted them. Okay. Already. Okay. Because <laughs> some, you know, we don't want to embarrass people by <laughs> making them explain their requests. Yeah. Um, but I think a uh, I think a special town meeting would be a good idea. Yeah. Um, but it should be, we should warn it quickly and yeah, do it soon, soon. Um, so that we can start moving on some of these things that we haven't already approved. Mm -hmm. You know, So the outdoor classroom was approved, Wi-Fi was approved, right. you know, and yeah. we should make that clear to people that there are some mm -hmm. of these that we've already approved right. as a select board, which is our, yeah. our option. Yeah. Um, Mm-hmm. But, um... Okay. Yeah. Michael, I'll get you my questions on that, uh, um, 
CV fiber thing. Okay, and you're welcome to speak with uh, that person yourself if you want. Who? That and person? I can give you this contact information to uh, do that. Or I can oh, what's the guy who's the... Very diamantity. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. I'm He's also getting calls from Linda Gravel. I don't know who she is. She's uh, on the CV fiber board, I guess. Okay. Well, yeah, and we do also have a the head of rep, um, who will actually... Yeah, back, back up, or... I've never... Well, I actually did meet her once, but she's never really... Um, mm. And um, Skip Jerry is the vice chair. Jerry Tadiz is the chair of the mm -hmm. And he did meet with the select board once. Yeah, I know. Some questions. Um, but, so I, I'm happy to either forward the, your questions to him, or... Um, I can give you this contact information and you can... Okay. The, uh, for Woodbury <coughs> Old Home Day, which is going to be Saturday, the Lake, Woodbury Lake Association had agreed to lend us their tent, but they want somebody to, somebody who has insurance to sign this agreement. So this would be the town of Woodbury hereby agrees to have primary responsibility for any and all claims, injuries, losses, or death that may arise during the rental of the tent. And the town agrees to hold Woodbury Lake Association harmless, including but not limited to claims arising out of the construction, operation, maintenance, supervision, inspection, or use of tents. Think we can do that? Are there people going to come set that tent up for you? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Stratton has a plan for that. I hope so. It's a big tent, It's right? a big tent. Mm -hmm. Is it? It's a 20 by 20. It's a big, heavy, white mm -hmm. canvas tent. Tent. And we're, and we're putting this wire exactly? Down here in the yard. In the yard? You said it was on Saturday. What's the actual date? July 30th. 30th. Like this, that? Mm -hmm. This Saturday. Oh my gosh. <coughs> yeah, there oh my gosh, the, is the uh, outreach has not been great. Yeah, I guess they're going ahead with it. So. Uh, I mean, we can do it. I you guess. want to come and help put the tent up? Well, time. I'm stuck anyway because my wife is oh. involved with this okay. and so are my children. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll be here to help. It'll be Do Friday all sorts night. Of things. Be, I guess the tent raising will be Friday night. Yeah, well, okay. I'm, I'm here for the cool. duration. Okay. So, yes, I'll sign up. God help me. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, whether, whether it's needed or not, I don't know. Ugh, I had so much paper. Then we had... A letter, an email that we all got from Giselle Eldred, who I guess is on Route 14 somewhere near Woodbury Lake, and uh, complaining about speeding. you remember seeing that? I do. Yeah. And I thought she wanted to come to a meeting, but then she said she didn't, so she couldn't. She just wants to make sure we take care of it. <laughs> well, I was hoping uh, if she came to a meeting, then Michael or you could explain to her what went on. What we've tried to do in the past. Yeah, right. Um, Pretty much done everything that we can do. She thinks that if we pay more money to the sheriff's department, that they'll come more often. But that's, that's kind of, not true. That's yeah. absolutely not true. We've yeah. tried that. Yeah. So far, it they, hasn't they panned never, out very well. You know, I don't know what the hours were in their contract. They never yeah. actually achieved any of the hours. Any of the hours we paid them for. Mm -hmm. I'm, totally short staff. Yeah. That's what I was told. Yeah. yeah. And we tried. We tried Harwick. They're also short staffed. Mm -hmm. We've really reached out to just about every mm -hmm. everybody that we can. Um, 
Let's pay for those signs. We'll pay for those nice digital those signs. really expensive. Yeah. At least, they, and they work. I Tim, don't know if it would. Tim made one of them work. If they so. put another two of them in the middle of that relatively long stretch, I don't think it would. We did talk about that originally. We talked about yeah. that originally. And we, we, we pared it down from five to two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Based on cost. But if you ever want to hang out in front of our place on Route 14, right through the marsh there, where the curve is, oh. that's just like straight acceleration zone. Wow. Yeah. yeah, people pass in front of our house wow. all the time. Yeah. It's extraordinary to hear to to hear people winding up. Some people are in a hurry. I guess so. They pass right in the village. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So, I, I mean, her complaint is well founded. I just yeah. I'm not exactly sure what we can do to fix it in the short term. If we can't even get sheriff's deputies to fulfill their allotted contract, we had invoices the last two months, so fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. How many yeah. hours? Mm. What did we sign you for? Like $150 or something? That's what did we sign tonight? Do you have one in there? One was. Yeah. was um, mileage of. Uh, Ten miles, which kind of the mileage can sometimes be more than the hourly rate. Than the hourly rate, rate. yeah. Mm. So this is for four hours worked. For a mile. Mm. Not, not awesome. Okay. So we had a couple of things to discuss in our executive session. Yeah. Which I don't know if we can legitimately do. Well, we one of them was just an update. We, we can. Okay. What do you mean? Yeah, you have a form. Well, we do. Yeah. Okay. So, uh... I thought, you know, maybe... I've noticed other towns... Uh, I read their agendas in the Times Argus, you know. Some of them just always put executive session at the end of the meeting in case it's needed. Okay. <laughs> So I'll make a motion to move into executive session. 